Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. What we're going to be doing today is taking a review of two different battery jump starters. So let's get this review underway. Let's go. Let's do it. It's time to go. Let's get it. Done. Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. What we are going to be doing today is a review on these two battery booster jump starter. I bought both of these recently and I want to see which one is going to be the better of the two. As you may, may or may not know, I work at a car dealership, a Toyota dealership, and I want to see which jumper box is going to work best for me when I need them at the dealer. Both of these units are high quality units. They both claim that they work very, very good with most automobiles up to V8 engines. This one came from Napa Auto Parts. This one came from Northern Tool. These are not your run-of-the-mill Home Depot, Lowe's, or Walmart jump boxes as those are very cheap and do not work well at all. So stay tuned and we'll see which one works the best. We will test them on my 2007 Chevrolet Uplander minivan. Whichever of the two devices I do not like will be returned to the retailer in which I purchased them from. So this is my 2007 Chevy Uplander. What I'm going to do is disconnect the positive terminal on the battery. That way we can plug each one of these boosters up and see which one will start the engine. Now, I do realize that this is not a true test scenario because typically you don't unhook the battery to jump start the vehicle. The battery still has a small amount of power in most cases. This will determine how these jumpers do on a very dead battery, on a battery that has absolutely no voltage whatsoever. So let's get this testing going. All right, so we're going to take our 10 millimeter wrench, undo the positive terminal on the battery. <clears throat> Okay, so we got the battery terminal off. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do first is we will not turn the power on yet. I will take the positive clamp, clamp it to what would normally be the positive battery terminal, but today it's not. It's just going to be the battery terminal that goes to the van starter, but not the battery post. Alright, next of all, we'll take the negative one. And since this unit has a power off feature that where you don't have to have the power on, it is safe to connect it to your battery on the negative terminal itself. Now, if your unit does not have a power off function, if it's always live, then you would want to connect it to a, a ground somewhere on the middle part of the chassis of the vehicle. So we'll connect this to the negative terminal. We're gonna turn it on. Alrighty, I heard some power stuff come on inside the fan motors running so let's see if this unit will jump start the car or the van alrighty as you can see it started the van very easily it started it as if it was the battery itself instead of the battery jumper so it started the van very easily so what we can do now is we can look and see that the alternator is actually charging so you can see right now we're running between 14.1 and 14.2. So this does accept the charge from the alternator. So we know the alternator is working just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook this one the same way I did the first one. Now the problem with this one, as I can already tell you, is the cords are so short. You can see how far they come up from the battery booster itself. They are very short. So if you've got a battery that's deep down in the engine, Bay like this this one in this van it's going to be a little bit hard to plug these up so let's get this going i'm going to hook the positive up to the positive terminal now see if i were having to actually hook this up to the van's battery terminal it's it's way right it's way down right here so it's going to be a little bit harder to reach let me swing this over here so i can get the other one hooked up you know what i'm gonna have to do it this way negative one split down here right now I'm liking the blue one a lot better the one from Napa this one's not reading any voltage because the voltage is nominal or is completely dead so I'm gonna have to force this one to jump override which would I by doing that it, I'm gonna hold down this button that I'm holding down. Now it will jump start the van. Let's see how good of a job it does.
Here's a problem that I've seen with some of these units. It said jump overload as soon as I started it and then it goes into this battery needing to cool down. Now the battery has to cool down. Well, what if you have to make several attempts to start the vehicle? You've got to wait like a, a you have to wait like an entire minute to let this one cool down so it will restart the vehicle. See, the blue one, the one from Napa, I don't have to do that. It's just a lead acid battery. It can handle a lot more. But this one did a fantastic job at starting the van, but say I didn't get the van started the first time. Now I'd have to wait and wait and wait. Let's see how many more seconds. 15 more seconds. What I'm gonna do is turn off the van and restart it. As you can see, it's doing the same thing. See, it's after you start it, both times it says jump, start, overload. This is not good. And it won't let you do anything else with the unit. In fact, it won't even let the alternator charge the battery that's inside of this unit. Whereas the one from Napa will, it will charge. It will accept a charge from the vehicle. Like I said, this one does not. And now we're having to wait for this one to cool down so we can restart the engine. I believe this is the one I'm gonna be taking back to the store. It does not seem to do the job that I needed to do at a car dealership. Hey folks, as you can see, it got dark on me, so I wanted to come around here, and I know it's kind of dark, but this is the Napa one. This is the Northern Tool, the one from Northern Tool, and I'm definitely gonna be keeping this one and returning this one. This one is dealership grade quality. If I get an alternator that's bad on a vehicle and I need to move the vehicle, but the battery's dead and the alternator's bad. I need this to supply the power to run the computers and the injectors on the vehicle so I can at least move it. What happens once you get started with this one, once it's detected that the vehicle starts, it cuts the connection because they do not want the alternator charging off of this. This one does accept the charge from an alternator. So that's good, that lets me know it does not cut the connection as soon as the vehicle starts. Now, if you want one for your personal vehicle, this would make an excellent choice. It will hold a charge much longer than one of these babies. This is a lead acid battery. It's just like a car battery, you know, in most ways, except that it's sealed. But these do lose their charge over time and you have to keep recharging them every couple months where this one will hold a charge for up to two years and still be at 70% after two years. So this is a really good one if you're just wanting something to pop in the back of your car. If, if you need to start your vehicle, you know, if your battery's dead or if you see somebody in a parking lot, use this one. This one works just fine for that and it's lightweight and a woman can, or a small man can pick this up and move it around easily. On the other hand, unless you're an incredibly strong woman or a pretty average size guy, this one's gonna be pretty heavy. It probably, I don't know, I'd say maybe about 25 pounds or so. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this one weighs. But this one will work for me at the dealership. Um, it will start a vehicle over and over and over without having to take a break to cool down like this one does. So anyway, that's how the ball rolls on this one, folks. Thank you for choosing to watch this video, and I, I hope you learned something. I hope it definitely helped. Please like and subscribe and look forward to future videos coming from me, yours truly, uh, Buddy. Thank you.